The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome. My name is Reverend Carla Van Dalen, and this is Barhaven United Church. As you can tell, things are about the same. But wherever you are, I hope you are doing well. I hope you're safe. And I hope in whatever way that you can, that you can... Um, continue those connections with family, with friends, and I know a lot of us are getting really good at um, things like Zoom. So whatever your comfort level is, I just hope that, able, that you are able to find your way in this new reality that we find ourselves. So welcome. Friends, over the last month, we have been on a journey together. Together we have celebrated Black History Month in a way that we have never done before. Together we have explored Black history in Canada, within the United Church of Canada, but also the quest for the United Church to be one truly of inclusion and acceptance for all people. We've explored these various themes through, through the gifts offered by artists and musicians within our church, and for that, I would very much like to thank Adrian Benjamin and Yvonne Virso. And this is one of his paintings right here. We've heard stories from those affected by racism, and in doing so, we've been moved, and perhaps even challenged, and maybe even given pause as we thought about how this community, this church as well, how we can offer spaces for these stories to be heard and also a place of safety for the storytellers themselves. And if you've been challenged, that's okay, because this isn't easy. Often the stories that we've heard are hard, but in listening to them, we have been broken open to their experience the experiences of our neighbor. And by being broken open, the light can get in. And in time, healness and wholeness can begin to, as well. Today is extra special because thanks to the anti-racism and inclusivity working group here at the church, we have invited local grades seven and eight students to wrestle with the question and the reality of racism within their lives. My meditation time this morning, in that time, I will, I will take the opportunity to explore the three winners, whom you will meet very shortly. And in my meditation, as we look at those three various um, artworks, I'm also going to ask you three questions. I'm going to do it multiple times. And those questions that I will invite you to is to think about how God is moving in their lives, but also in our own, as we bear witness to them and to their lived experience. So let us gather around, let us listen, and celebrate that God isn't finished with us yet, that God is offering us wholeness right here in our midst. So come, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us worship together.
Friends, if you're following along at home, following along with our worship service, I invite you, please join me in the call to worship. Do you really not know that he is God of all the heavens and on earth? Have you really not heard how she has brought princes to naught and oppressors to their knees? Haven't you already been told that, you, that you've counted among the stars and that you matter? Do you not know? Have you not heard? We come to learn. We come for our strength to be renewed. We come in hope. I invite you, let us pray. Creator God, you have called us forth, each star by name. We are in your presence this hour. We come before you acknowledging and celebrating the journeys of our black siblings and cousins far and wide. We come knowing that these journeys have been met with much strife and pain. And although there have been triumphs along the way, the pain and brokenness of oppression lingers yet. But we come celebrating a people whom you have infused with a boundless faith and whose hope in you has manifested into renewable strength and fortitude. And so we come, Creator God. Guide our worship this hour. May we not grow weary, but soar on eagles' wings as one people, bound together in your love into a hopeful tomorrow. With God's help, with Christ's help, we ask this. Amen. It is very easy for us to forget that our relationship with our God goes back far into the mist, mists of our collective consciousness. On the second Sunday in Lent, we remember the call that was made to Abraham and to Sarah and the promise that was theirs. The call to them was not a once-only call, but an ongoing, perpetual call to fulfill God's will for all of creation. We too are called each and every one of us. We are not always comfortable with that call, nor do we always honor it, but each of us is called. We are called to be faithful, to trust in what the future is, even though we don't know or can't even imagine what God has in store for us. And so today, We extinguish another candle for those times when we have let the shadows of doubt overpower our sense of being in God's presence. Let us pray. God of our forebearers, you call us to be faithful in newness and in the unknown. Help us on our Lenten journey to trust you that wherever you may lead us, we are always, we always have a sense of your loving embrace. In the name of Jesus, the one who trusted you, we make this prayer. Amen. Just a little history. After the events of George Floyd and lots of other racial problems that we suffered both locally and internationally. Members of the congregation started a working group and we started to have a conversation to talk about racism and how we can try to, to help to eradicate that racism. As we moved into 2021, we recognized that February was Black History Month and we decided we need to do something for Black History Month. And it was an idea of Reverend Diane Carden. She had this beautiful idea, let us do a competition for the students in our schools. And so the committee got together and before you know it, we had a competition. We invited all grades seven and eight in Barhaven to partake in this competition to express themselves. And the name of the competition was Youthful Expressions. And they were supposed to tell us about their experience on racism 
or things that they think could help to reduce racism. And we had seven entrants into this competition, and today we are here to award our finalists, the top three persons, and they don't know who they are yet, but we have the top three persons here. But before we do, we also reached out to various members in the community to support us. And one very supportive member was the Member of Parliament for Nepean, uh, the councillor Chandra Arya. And I want to invite Chandra now to say a word or two before we actually make the presentation to the three finalists. So let's welcome Chandra. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. You know, Black History Month uh, was first, uh, I think, Government of Canada recognized February to celebrate the Black History Month 25 years back. But black people have been contributing to our communities for several hundred years, even before we called our country Canada. Uh, you know, that has been an ongoing thing. However, we still have not reached a stage where we can say that everybody is being treated equally, everybody is getting the same opportunities. We have not still there. We have to continue to work on that. Every member of parliament, once in four years term, gets one opportunity only to present a private member's bill. In the previous parliament, in the previous four years, between 2015 and 2019, I had one opportunity, and I presented the bill on hate crimes, strengthening the criminal code against hate crimes. And as a member of uh, Parliamentary Black Caucus since 2015, we have been working hard, very, very hard. We have put our money where our mouth is. But fundamentally what we started is, we started to listen, actually. We started to have real conversation, listening to black Canadians, listening to organizations representing them. So much so, this year, even in this pandemic, we hosted a Zoom call for three days, listening to over 100 organizations across the country. It ranged from the economic opportunity that we have to provide to black Canadians. To, it ranged from dealing with the criminal aspects that actually uh, are against the indigenous people and black Canadians in many respects. It varies issues we have been working on. I am proud to say that we have done quite a bit, but I am first to admit that there is still much more needs to be done. And the laws, the legislations, the rules alone will not solve the problem, we all know that. Along with the rules, the laws, and the legislation comes the education. Education of Canadians, education of all the peoples, but that education starts in the schools. And getting school children involved in this is a good part, a best part of getting the community involved. Thank you so much. So thank you very much, Mr. Arya. And now we are going to move into the presentation of the awards. And we start off with the third place. The candidate or student in the third place submitted a drawing. She, and I say she, so it, it goes down to two now. <laughs> she comes from Mother Teresa Catholic High School and she's also part of the Virtual Academy and her drawing was entitled Sands of the Earth. Third place winner, ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Benjamin. Second place, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Angelina Joseph. last person that's left obviously is the winner and the first place ladies and gentlemen in our first ever black history month competition of youthful expressions 
with a poem entitled The One Difference. Let's get a big drum roll and hands together for Ethan Fletcher from Mother Teresa Catholic High School. now move into our scripture readings for today. Let us pray. Sheltering one, keeper of hearts, as we receive your word today, bring us into open spaces where peace and reconciliation will thrive with joy and blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from Paul's epistle to the Romans. Chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents to the law, but also to, also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness, barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust did not make him waver concerning the promise of God but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised, therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, was written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by his elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous, adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes to the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May your wisdom blossom in us with the aid of your Holy Spirit. With God's help, may it be so. Amen. 
As we heard earlier, a number of young people in our community graciously accepted the invitation to, to interact and to reflect on the topic of racism in their own lives. In my meditation today, I would like to share with you the entries from the three top winners. And, of, um, and over the course of this month, many times I have invited you to listen with open hearts. And the listening certainly continues here today as we listen to the voices of young people in our community. And I really have to say that whenever you look at all the entries, really each person that was, was brave enough and that put themselves out there and that entered this contest, everyone really deserves a prize. So if you would like to actually view each of the submissions that came into the church, I invite you to actually to contact the church office, Lily in the office, and she will send you a Zoom link for a meeting on Monday night of the Anti-Racism and Inclusivity Working Group, and they're going to be taking, I guess, about an hour and a half or so, and just going through the four other submissions that, uh, that came in. So if you'd like to see them, just contact Lily in the office. And I just also want to say that the three <clears throat> pieces of work that I'm sharing with you today, each of them have graciously said that we can, that I can share this with you. So as we begin, as we listen to each, I invite you to listen, to listen for God in the spaces between the words. And I have three questions. And as I said a little bit earlier, I'm going to be asking you these three questions after each one. And the first question is, where is God calling us to be? How is God calling us to act? And the third, what is God asking of me this day? And as I said, after each, after I share each piece of work, I will ask you these three questions again. And if you want, you can put me on pause and do a little bit of journaling or perhaps talk with the people, if you're watching this with other people at home or wherever you may find yourself, if you want to have a little conversation, go right ahead. Um, but this is just an invitation. So take it as you will. So. Let us begin. So the third place winner is Amanda Benjamin. And she is from St. Mother Teresa High School, Catholic High School, Virtual Academy, and her drawing is entitled Sands of the Earth. And she goes and, and breaks down each of the components of the drawing and explains what they mean. So when they come together into the whole, they really have impact. So I'll begin with the color of the background. She writes, the color of the neutral background represents how we should treat each other, each person, and how we should approach them. This means that we should not act differently because we see a black or white person. Everybody says to not judge a book by its cover because it might be completely different from the treasures you find inside. It is the same with people. <clears throat> If you cannot get past a person's exterior figure or complexion, you will never get very far. You should be neutral, normal, when you meet a new person regardless of their complexion because you might find yourself a new friend. The wood. The wood around the hourglass represents the ships that slaves were taken from their homeland and transported around various parts of the world leaving their family, friends, culture, and home behind, all for an unjust cause because of the, because of the color of their skin. <clears throat> the hourglass. The hourglass represents the course of time. The sand. The sand in the hourglass represents the racism that's still alive in our world today. The sand mixes because racism is not only on black people, it is on people of indigenous cultures, Asians, Indians, and Latinos, for example. Racism also exists within different religions. The decrease of sand. The decrease of sand represents the death of racism. The earth. 
The earth represents our world and the racism that is in it. Although it may be subtle, it is still present. The yellow background, the yellow background in the hourglass represents the hope that we have. The hope that lives on in the hearts of those that suffer from the racism, that there will be a better tomorrow without racial injustice. The circles. The circles on the wooden frame of the hourglass represent the milestones that have been achieved by various black people. For example, Viola Desmond, Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman, and many others. And she writes, thank you for reading my synopsis and I hope you appreciate my drawing. So here are those three questions again. Where is God calling us to be? How is God calling us to act? What is God asking of me this day? Our second place winner is Angeline Joseph. And she is a student at St. Joseph Catholic High School. And this is entitled, This Diary is the Property of Kimberly Davis. And it is a story. And this story is told in the form of a diary entry. Now, due to its length, I'm just going to read a few excerpts from it. And I'm going to give you some context of the wider story. So it begins like this. Monday, March 29th, 1971. Dear Diary, these past few days have been melancholic. Just thinking about it makes my head spin. I feel like it's been forever since I've even laughed or even smiled. I'm still struggling to accept what happened, the terrifying reality. But I know that sooner or later I won't have a choice. I wish things were different, back to how they were before. Although at the back of my mind, I know that's not a possibility, just a wishful dream, a fantasy. Today we had an assembly at school. Everyone gathered in honor of Jasmine. It's the first day I felt so energized and motivated since her passing. I finally know what I want to achieve in life what my life's ultimate goal will be, how I will make a difference in the world. I know that by the time I'm done, the world will be at least one shade brighter. This is how it all began. Now the author goes on in diary entries to tell us, to share with us how her best friend Jasmine died senselessly at the hands of two teenage boys. And the story continues. Friday, March 26th, 1971, is a day I will never forget. It is the day a piece of me died along with Jasmine. Why is it that even though the Civil Rights Act was signed seven years ago, America, our nation remains replete with the intertwined concepts of racism, discrimination, and intolerance. Discrimination against race, discrimination against ethnic origin, discrimination against color, religion, sex, marital status, disability, and the countless other qualities that make each and every human being unique. It is evident that this emerging issue um, present within our society needs to be attended. We can't go on pretending it doesn't exist, because clearly, it does. Classmates and teachers, leaders of the next generation, the solution to racism needs you. Everyone has a pivotal role to play. To bring changes, we need to fight racism together. We must stand united and speak up against injustice as one. Then only can we win the fight against racism. Thunderous applause filled the auditorium as the students got to their feet. Words of encouragement and deafening cheers echoed, bouncing off the walls of the room. I smiled. 
Just like one million starts with one, the solution to racism does too. Not everyone realizes that the solutions to problems that are negatively affecting the whole world can be found locally. It only takes one person to stand up against racism. End quote. This is the end of the ex excerpts, but it's not the end of the story. So the three questions. Where is God calling us to be? How is God calling us to act? What is God asking of me this day? And lastly, our first place winner is a poem from Ethan Fletcher, and he is a student at St. Mother Teresa Catholic High School here in Barhaven. And it's entitled, One Difference. One difference. It's like I'm in a cage, stuck in a cage, with people just like me, but just one difference. One difference that causes hatred towards me. One difference that causes me to feel worthless. One difference that makes them feel better, makes them feel like they are better than me, than the people just like me. One difference. That's all it takes for us to get beaten, killed, and laughed at. Our arms, legs, and face look alike except for one difference that makes us scared to walk outside, makes us scared of others. If people just ignored the color, color and looked at what's inside, if people were just colorblind, the world would be a better place for all. But those are just ifs. But if the ifs became a reality, if people just ignored the one difference, Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. If we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. If we continue to constantly disregard people, human beings that God created, that have only one difference, then our communities, our region, our cities, our world are not safe. No one is. One difference. That's all it takes to feel different. One difference. One difference that doesn't matter. One difference. And the three questions. Where is God calling us to be? How is God calling us to act? What is God asking of me this day? Our faith informs us that God is always offering us opportunities for wholeness, for the best outcomes and options in every situation. It is indeed up to us to make the small differences that can impact those around us. And we do that by taking small steps. We do that by starting with the small space that's within us, and then we expand out to six feet around us. For if we start there, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, and even our countries, can no change. But for now, for today, let us concentrate on the spaces within us and around us. May God confront us 
and comfort us. And may hope for a brighter future be your prayer for this day. With God's help, may it be so. Amen. Friends, we now reach the part of our service where we usually pass the plates around and we take up the offering. But it's a different world, and many of us are making our donations in a variety of different ways, whether that's dropping off an envelope at the church, whether that's making a donation online on or through our website, or through PAR. Or there's so many ways to give. There's also the time that we give the time that we give by serving on ministries, the time we give in leadership positions. This church and this community is indeed rich and blessed with all the ways that you offer of yourself. So however you make an offering, let us do so in our hearts right now. Let's just take a moment to visualize that and then we'll have our prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, accept these gifts. Bless them and use them to bring peace to places of unrest, love to places of hate, 
joy to places of fear, and hope to places of loss, and equal rights and justice for all. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Let us pray. God of peace, give us the courage, strength, and perseverance needed to challenge the systems of racism so that we can clear a path for your justice, peace, and equality. O Holy One, we believe racism is present in our society and in our church and throughout time has manifested itself in many forms and in varying degrees. We know racism is alive in our language and in our structures, and through our systems it actively works to deconstruct your glorious design, blocking the path to justice, equality, and peace that Jesus brings. Racism exists and it challenges the gospel message that we cry. We cry abundant life for all, knowing that we are slowly being suffocated by the pervasive evil of racism. Some of us are choking, some of us cannot breathe, and some of us are dead. We cry peace knowing that we are the instruments of God's peace and that such peace cannot exist without justice, equality, compassion, and God's grace. We cry Emmanuel, God with us, knowing that to God every life matters. God is with all people, even though as a community and as a society we have stated through our actions that some lives matter more than others. compassionate one. Help us to understand how racism finds life in our hearts and in our cries. Together may we move from crying to celebration and inclusion. In hearing stories and seeing images of hope from our young people, we long for a time when all people may be celebrated for the beauty and love and the light that they bring into this world simply by being a part of it. In this time of tense anticipation, may we commit ourselves to the people of your way, crying but also creating a path for justice, equality, and peace for all people in this wilderness of hatred and racism. We offer all of these prayers, trusting that you will answer us in your time and that you care for us beyond knowing. For you are like our mother, you are our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As we continue on our Lenten journey, may we take the stories, the images, and the music that we have celebrated, that we have shared this past, past month, and may we take that anticipation and that joy with us wherever we may go. May it challenge us, but may it also warm us and give us hope for a better tomorrow, for we are stronger and healthier together. May your hope grow in the Lord. May you walk and not be weary. And may you be raised up on eagles' wings now and forevermore. And let the people say, Amen. Be safe, my friends, and we shall see you next week. God bless.